Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of KMB Comer Plays Minecraft. This is Kevin Comer, and uh, I've been doing some things since the last episode. Um, I was uh, doing some Enderman hunting with my friend Rom, and uh, using the new sword. Managed to get some Ender Pearls, and I hope you can't hear that banging outside. You probably can. There's some work going on outside my house, and I'm sorry, uh, I can't do anything about it. But yeah, we, we got some ender pearls, so we are probably fairly close to making a trip to the end. And uh, I'm just going to take a sleep here. And uh, I've been working on the tower some more, too. I got the, uh, the shape of the shaft of it all fixed up. Um, oh yeah, one other thing. Somebody mentioned in the comments last time that they didn't think this sword would be repairable, and they are correct. And that is a little bit unfortunate, but I'm okay with it. Uh, oh, sure that Enderman? Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that sword not being repairable. It sucks a little bit, but, um... I'm going to be using it for some very specific things. Uh, one was hunting some Endermen uh, to get those Ender Pearls, and we have some now. So it's pretty much served its purpose there. The, the other thing I'll probably be using it for is uh, hunting uh, Wither Skeletons. Uh, so we can go kill the Wither boss, and uh, yeah, it'll serve its purpose there. So. I've adjusted the shape of the tower as you can see and I think it actually looks quite a bit better like that. I also have the the uh, glowstone lamp ring at the top so you can see a little bit better the shape of what we're going for here. I spent a little time in the nether picking up a lot of nether brick because we're gonna need some up there and um, yeah adjusting that shape was uh, it wasn't too difficult, but taking down the uh, the stone that I'd put up was a lot harder than than fixing it, like uh, you know silk touching, all the uh, all the smooth stone that I'd put up. We're still, like I said, I've said this a few times. We're not in the snapshots, so digging down even on stone is a uh, a bit of a dangerous prospect. But I managed to do it without dying. The funny thing is with that dirt safety net up there, um, I, I'm getting a lot of spawns on the outside of the tower, so I had to, you know, use my bow, knock quite a few mobs off when I was digging down to fix up the tower, but, whoop, a little bit of lag. Um, <laughs> here's another funny thing uh, that's happened since last time. We had a bit of a jailbreak at the village. Oh. There's a little guy there. I I think they're done coming through now, but we had a whole bunch come through the portal, and uh, I herded mo most of them into a little hole here. So they're just kind of having a good time down there. The guys, you glitching into some blocks. Oh well. I, w I don't know, maybe we'll find some project to use them for in the nether, or they might just stay there forever, who knows. Uh, yeah, so I am going to head to the top of the tower, and we are going to work on getting the, uh, the chicken holder up there all worked out better. Uh, like, like I said, it was killing all the chickens, and I just ended up slaughtering the leftovers on my own, which only happened to be two chickens. There were only a couple left, and, uh, so I killed them, and I took it down, and I came up with a new design. And so I'm going to head up there, gather some supplies, and head up there, and um, get to work on that. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to work on um, on the chicken holding unit up here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make make myself an infinite spring. Uh, I'm going to need some water to move the chickens around, of course. So get that done. Uh, now, like I said... I, uh, I plan this out a little bit in creative, so I kind of know what I'm doing, but it's still going to be a little bit of fiddling to get it right. So first thing 
I need to come right in line with this row of glass. And that's where I think that's got it. That looks right to me. Yeah, I think that's good. And then we need to uh, make a 9x9 nine nine square um, of stone brick centered on that uh, that shaft there where the uh, where the chickens come up so uh, let's see here we are one two three four five there uh, and then we got one two three four five one two three four five that's nine right one two three four five six seven eight nine okay we're good there uh so this is going to um be the the roof of the um chicken cell i guess yeah call it chicken cell so come four out this way and we'll fill this in jeez it's already getting night again eh? okay well all right and you know i'm not, i'm not sure maybe building the roof first isn't the right choice but i gotta get my spacing right in here i you know like i was saying last time i want to maximize the usable area up here and uh this might not be the final material that we uh that we have up here but um we'll just get it laid out so from there we come down four more blocks so one uh let me just mark it out with dirt so i make sure i get it right because there is no room for error here so that's that's got it right one two three and the fourth will be stone brick and I pretty much just can lay out um, another complete square here. So I'm going to do that right away. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe I'll just do a little bit more off camera to get some of this layout stuff done. And I'll show you what we're working towards. So I will be back. Okay, I got the... Uh, floor laid out and the ceiling and I took down the central uh, column uh, it didn't need to be as high as it was so I took that down a little bit now what we want here is uh, we have the villager coming up here with our chickens so we need him to push them out like he's been doing and uh, so that requires him to have a block over his head so he cannot also escape and he just comes up here, shoves chickens out, and then he's on his way back down. So uh, what we also need then is um, a method for getting the chickens down into the holding area, which will be uh, down around there. So um, we're going to use some water streams and stuff to do that, like I had before. But I'm going to be a little bit smarter about it this time, and that's why I did some planning. Um, so that there's no dead spots and, you know, places for chickens to drown and that sort of thing. So, what we're doing here is uh, I'm laying out some water streams so that um, they'll always be in a water stream and they'll never be in still water and... Um, yeah, it'll just move them in a consistent motion to where we need them to be. So, oh, I'm going to need a couple more materials for that. I ran out of stone brick. I'll need some more of that. Oh, and you may have noticed that I replaced the material for the, um, the central shaft with the red wool. I'm liking the way it works as an accent here. It's kind of a, a theme color, I would say, for, uh, for this tower. So you know in real life too I mean so it works <clears throat> oh, excuse me uh, 
Right, so, um, I need a fence gate and a bunch of signs now, and I brought some wood, good. Um, I thought I had a crafting bench here, I guess I don't. Well, anyways, we'll just lay one over here where we've been doing some other stuff. And make some sticks. Um, I don't know how many we need. Should be good. We only need one fence gate for what we're doing here. This will be right above the uh, villager's head to um, uh, hold the water from kind of covering over the shaft that he's coming up. So there's that. I need a whole bunch of signs for holding water along the edges. Um, let's get a few more than that. Where do I have them again? Okay, 16. Oh, right, they stack in 16s. Um, hmm, okay, I guess that's enough for now. Uh, oh, except that I can't hold anything. Huh. Well, um, <laughs> oh, okay, we got a little room in here. I'll just throw what in there. Well, the pistons and the dispenser are for later. Okay, sorry, a little interlude there. Get my thoughts together. So, uh, what we need is, I actually need to get up on top. It'll be easier to do it from there. Right here where the center is, I need to... Wow, I can really feel the uh, house moving. They must be really doing some digging out there. Okay, I need a block here to put that fence gate on. Jeez, that is really noisy. <laughs> okay, so fence gate there. Uh, opened up. Everything passes through, no problem. And, oop, okay. Get a block update, close it off. Ah, uh, now I gotta get out. Not the easiest thing to build, but I do need to get that ladder back in there. Okay, so we got that laid out. And we'll just close that back off. Now, uh, just need to finish off... Actually, I need to completely finish off the walls here. So I'll get that done. We're gonna throw up some fences along the walls to uh, hold that water back. And this isn't particularly advanced stuff. I know this is pretty basic stuff, but um, it's very necessary to the function of the farm and I'm really anxious to get that done. Uh, both, hang on a second. I'm gonna stop recording here for a second, just check out what's going on out there. Okay, well, I stopped recording for a while. Uh, the noise started getting even worse, but uh, I'm back now, and uh, I'll probably just power through it, but I got the signs done, and uh, the gate is in, and now all I have to do here is just place some water. Uh, we need four water source blocks. There's two, and... Uh, I only have three buckets. I need to go grab some more water in a second here. Three. And yeah, I'll just fill them all up. Okay. So, what the purpose of these sources is, is, uh, where did I need it? Still here? I think here. Yeah, that looks right. So, yeah, when the uh, the villager comes up and pushes the chickens out, they just come into these water sources. And actually, if I go above, we'll be able to see that uh, the way they're set up here. Um, yeah, see, they're all flowing outward. Ooh, did I break that or did I miss a block? Oh well, doesn't matter. Can I get that? Okay. Yeah, they're all flowing outward, so any chickens that get up here will uh will naturally flow outward and get pushed to the sides where we'll have some more water streams and uh we'll get them consolidated and I will get working on that 
and I will be back. Well, I went ahead and laid the rest of it out, and I think uh, it's pretty much done and in a usable state. So I'll show you how this is all going to work. Um, so I showed you this already, where the uh, water streams all push... Oh, I can't fight that, eh? I'll go the other way. The water streams all push um, the chickens to the outside from the center. And then along the edge here, here I have just a one block drop off uh, to these water streams uh, that start in this corner here. Uh, and usually in a mob system, you'd want a two block drop so the mobs can't fight their way back up top. But in this case, the water in the middle here will prevent them from ever getting back. So uh, even if a chicken comes right into this corner, they'll get pushed one of the two ways. And uh, then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. And then we have a drop down to continue the stream. This is new source blocks here. Uh, if I found that if I had to drop off one earlier, so I used less streams, um, oh, I can't get up here. If I had the drop off one earlier, so I only used uh, one stream in the corner and it just continued on, the chickens would uh, drop off to the lower level, which was right here, and uh, they would drown sometimes. So that wasn't working too well, <clears throat> so I changed that to this, and it works fine, just extra source blocks, so it continues on. And here you'll see something a little bit tricky. Uh, I had to turn the corner here to come back to the right spot so I had the water stream just continue along over top of this sign uh, so that I could have them drop down here right in the corner and that's just for access and this is just for access um, they drop down right in the corner and I'd send them uh, back that way so I found uh, chickens they really like to uh, stay on top of the water as long as you don't try to make them swim up or anything they're fine uh, so they'll swim over this no problem and make it to the corner uh, they also like jump non-stop in the water so you need a too high area for them to fit through if I had a block like this and tried to force them under there they just wouldn't go uh, they all get jammed up here. So we have a two high here going this way. And it forces them all down. Uh, sign blocking it. Dispenser there. And they'll all fall down onto this half slab. So they can't uh, they can't jump back up. It's too high. And they'll all collect right here. Um, and they'll sit here until they're ready to be harvested. And then I have actually the chicken... Uh, cooking and killing system all hooked up right here so I can actually get out just by breaking that and not falling down to my death I did that once while I was building this I didn't quite die I made it back onto the ladders right near the bottom but it was close so I can show you how this works now um, so I can actually put the lava in there now and uh, so the purpose of them sitting on the half slab is it holds them low enough so that the items uh, can't get destroyed by the lava when I shoot out of the dispenser. But uh, they're high enough so the lava does just clip them. So here, uh, this part of the, you know, we have the four sections, the four tubes coming up to the top of the tower. Uh, so this one here will be um, closed off all the way up like you know like this and then up here of course we have a little more space to work with but it'll be yeah you won't see any of this we'll just have a simple redstone torch tower you know it'll take a lot of torches probably more than a stack but oh well I've come this far with the project uh, so that's how the signal will come up from the bottom and um, then when it gets up here, we have sort of a little trickery with the um, with the dispenser there. So uh, you know how dispensers they interact funny with with uh, redstone updates near them. Well, 
I'm not exactly sure why this one works so well, but it is working so well, uh, really quite well for what I want. So I guess the the power comes up here and it powers this. Okay, okay, I think I I'm understanding how it work how it's working. So this is not powered right now, but uh, when this torch comes on, it powers this block, which powers the dispenser and turns uh you know turns the the lava on it shoots the lava out uh and then immediately after uh it gets a redstone update from whoops oh no i lost my repeater it gets a redstone update from that repeater and uh sucks it back in and then a, a second later the dis or the uh, piston there retracts for a split second and then and then just goes back out so it all just operates on one quick button press and now I need to make a new repeater. Uh, I shouldn't have broken that. That was kind of stupid. Um, it's alright, I have the materials. Because uh, I just wanted to show show it in action before I move on. Um, where was I? Here. Oh, I was over here. Okay, let me just jump back up. Um, oop, alright, yeah, let me get a little higher, okay, get that back on, alright, that, uh, that's good, so, so that when that repeater got powered, it didn't give the, uh, it didn't make the dispenser shoot anything out, because the dispenser is not powered right now, so it only, it only, uh, you know, does stuff when it's powered. So, uh, here, let's see it work. Okay, yeah, so it's so quick, you didn't even see the lava shoot out. But, uh, you can see a little bit of smoke there, and that is enough to, to cook the chickens. Here, I'll actually break this so we can see it. See how quick it, it works. Alright, yeah, so it's, it's there and done, like, instantly. So, that's the chicken cooking mechanism. Uh, next step, I just need to have a simple chicken holder right here. Uh, that's the egg chute, and then here is the cooked chicken chute, the power chute, and on the other side is the villager chute. So, uh, I'm going to cut here, and we'll get something else going here. Well, apparently by I'll get something going, I meant I will fall down the side of the tower. So now... I need to make a trek down here. Thank God for feather falling. Uh, oh boy, this is a long one. Um, ah, should be all right. Okay, all right, good. We're good. Um, <laughs> I think I'm good. All right, all right. We're fine. So, actually, there aren't too many mobs on the outside right now, but. <laughs> I've made this trip a few times. I was lucky to, uh, I actually landed right on the one wide bit right there. I guess that was pretty lucky to hit that. Um, yeah. So, oh, you can hear a zombie. So yeah, this is what I've been dealing with now that I have that dirt platform. And I guess in the finished product of the tower, it will, uh, it will be like this too. Dealing with all kinds of mobs but that's okay uh, as soon as I get down I'm going to climb back up and uh, I'm gonna do a little more cosmetic work at the top there um, so I'll cut here again and we'll be back alright well uh, I'm just putting this um, this nether brick stair lip around the top. Um, the real tower has a black uh, kind of overhang here, and the dark color uh, is gonna make a really nice, a really nice accent here at the top. I think we have you know the red, and then uh, there will be a dome over the top here uh, that's gonna be made out of. Uh, out of the new quartz block, uh, so it'll be white, and so we have this nice dark color to contrast. It's not perfectly black, but um, 
I think it's the best we can do uh, with a with a block type that has the stairs. So yeah, that's gonna work out. Um, but as I do this, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I've been uploading all my videos in um, 1080p so far, and the quality is really nice, and I like it. But uh, um, I was thinking of maybe trying this one in 720p just to see what the uh, the size difference and the render time difference is. I'm actually using uh, Premiere Pro for my my uh, my video editing and my rendering, and it's pretty fast. It takes pretty uh, makes pretty good use of my my fast graphics card, but even so, like a 30 minute episode is about an hour to render, and then uh, with the settings I'm using, the file size ends up being about uh, oh I don't know like one one to one point five gigs. So with my connection, that's like another hour to upload. So I'm looking at whoops, looking at about two hours to uh, you know just to render and upload a video. So I'm gonna see oh geez uh, I'm gonna see if I can cut down that time with uh with the 720p without sacrificing quality obviously if this video ends up not looking as good I'll go back to the 1080p but uh, you know anything I can do to help me get up content more efficiently will be a big help uh, so yeah this these lights here they'll show from underneath uh, like shining down and They'll also kind of illuminate the uh, quartz, and uh, I'm going to have them all hooked up to the new day-night sensors, of course. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? I think like so. Yeah, the new day-night sensors. And we can see, yeah, that's nice. I like that. So we should be able to, uh, to get them nicely illuminating everything at night, and... Uh, Let's just take a look here. Where was that block I dropped? There it is. Okay. Yeah, that look looks really nice. So the next thing I'm just gonna put some uh, half slabs on top to kind of complete the look, and then there will be a uh, an iron um, an iron bar railing up there too. So we're making some really good progress here, and. Uh, Things are looking good, so I'll cut here and uh, probably finish this up pretty quick, but I'll be back. Well, I... Uh Got all the stairs done, uh, half slabs on top of the stairs, and this nice um, iron bar railing. So that part is done there. Uh, the next step up here will be to, I guess, start working on the dome, but I still need to wait for the next patch uh, for the quartz blocks to get working on that. Um, I could uh, get the redstone done up for the lamps in preparation of the day night sensor, the daylight detectors. So I could get working on that next time. But uh, I'm just about ready to wrap this episode up. The very last thing I wanted to do was take the few eggs I have left over and um, I uh, constructed what hopefully is going to be the final um, shoot for the seed eggs, the seed chickens, I mean. Uh, the ones that supply the whole system, so you know, it's just, it's the easiest, <laughs> most uh, simple part of the entire system. It's just, uh, you know, some water, actually, we could see it over here. Just water on top of a sign, that's all it's going to be, and I'm just going to fill it up with chicken. So let's see what we get here. Fire all my eggs in there. One. Did I get another one there? I 
think I did. Is there two there? I can't quite tell. Well, let's just fire the rest in there. And uh, I have a whole bunch of seeds here, so I can do some breeding. Um, although I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to reach them. I'm, I'm doing it slow because, um, you know, if I get a whole bunch hatch at once, they could uh, jump out of there. Okay, so we have a... Okay, that's good. So we got like three, maybe four already? Okay, that'll that'll do to get started. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. And maybe I'll just put a little egg catching platform right here for, you know, just a temporary thing. And I'll just put a pumpkin there. No mob spawns. And I suppose I can breed from here. So, yeah, I guess it's just the three. Anyways, uh, we've made some good progress today. Um, things are looking good around here. And next time, probably work on the control panel. Maybe get that all hooked up with all that redstone logic I showed a couple episodes ago. So, thanks for watching. And uh, until next time, this is Kevin Comer. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode.